Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. In this episode, we chat with Anna Seacat, co-founder of Glypta, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing safety in Web3 and bringing more women into the NFT space. Let's do this. All right, welcome to the Nifty Chicks. Super excited to have Anna Seacat, who is co-founder of Glypta.org. Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I've been excited about this for a week. <laughs> Counting down. I know. It's, <laughs> so we actually just met via, well, I reached out to her on LinkedIn because uh, we were both speaking at NFT London, which I'm super excited about. And Same. I thought it would be, I thought it would, A, just be fun to connect with other speakers especially female speakers that are going to be at NFT London and, you know, co hopefully connect prior to so that we can meet up in London and, you know, have those conversations before we, we are there. Uh, so give us a little bit of your background. You have a very impressive background. Oh, uh, so we want to hear, you know, how, how you got started in Web3 and especially NFTs and, and what you're working on now. Sure. Yeah, thank you. My uh, background is pure marketing. Um, grew up, kind of cut my teeth in the agency world, and then went from there to pursue an advanced degree in marketing and landed at IBM, specifically IBM Security. Um, I mixed in IBM Security with IoT, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then that led me to a company that was doing IoT in enterprise buildings. And uh, my, the way I got to Web3, I was thrust into it. That organization decided to pivot completely away from that mobile access business into Web3. And I had been done research into it already. I was putting together some slides and presentation for the board of directors, not knowing really that the pivot was coming. And so when it came, it felt really exciting. I was excited about it because I had seen the potential of not only um, crypto, but this entire, um, you know, applying the concept of decentralization, decentralized finance, finance, and then applying it to the internet, you know, decentralized internet. And, and so I, I came to it, um, I had to take a pill, so to speak, like if I was going to stay, I was going to go all in, meaning that me and my team would go all into Web3. And that's what we did. And we transferred our skills immediately, our marketing and PR skills into community building skills. And we built out um, a community for this organization. And while I was doing that, I, I felt what it meant to go into the rabbit hole. <laughs> I experienced that firsthand and it got to, I kept hearing everyone say, we need more women in Web3, we need more women in Web3. And I said, what woman wants to go into a rabbit hole? And I thought about the women in my <laughs> own lives and what it would take to get them to come over. And I knew that we have I decided right then and there, we have to meet women where they are. They're not gonna change their online behavior. When they're, you know, if you ask them to come to a new internet, you at least have to have, to have some of those features that makes them feel safe. And so that's where I came up with the idea of Glypta with some other women. That's so amazing. It, it's, you know, you make it sound so easy, <laughs> like the transition just sounds so easy. And, and all of our listeners know one of my favorite questions, um, because everyone kind of, it's a, it's a nuanced version of what we all felt. Um, you know, when you were stepping into the world web three and now having to, you know, for your day-to-day -day job, learn more about what this is. And then also like then pursue presentations about it. Like, how talk to me about kind of what your experience was to really understand web three like how how yeah, i heard you say you did research and like what where were you finding this research how what was that process like for you so well, that's the problem is in order to get to web three you have to be in web three that's the dilemma that we have right now because web three is being built on decentralized applications and in gated applications that aren't being indexed so women today, especially, but really everyone, when we go to research, we go to Google and um, we, we search problems and questions. But unfortunately, when we were doing that research, the only thing that was coming up is um, data that was from the very organizations. Um, so marketing data, right? The first thing you have to have in order to get to Web3 is a crypto wallet. 
and the only information I could find on crypto wallets were written by the crypto wallet vendors. <laughs> um, and then when I decided, okay, I really have to experience what it's like to mint an NFT. You can't just Google all these NFT communities and discover anything about them. You have to join 12 different discords and start following the communities. And that's exactly what I did. And then I would you know, follow them on Twitter and start shortlisting which NFT communities I was most interested in. And it was a, it was a really extensive process. And fortunately, I was able to do that for my job. But I mean, I was doing this 12 hours a day. <laughs> um, and the average person isn't going to have that time. And that's what I mean about our online behavior on web 2.0 is so nice because it sped up the research process. And then when you get to web three, it's like hitting a wall and, and you start all over and you really have to learn every day. And I, I heard someone the other day say, man, every day I wake up in web three and I have to learn how to do something new. Mm -hmm. And that's, right. it, it's, it's a really difficult process right now. And it does feel very unsafe because when you Google things right now, for instance, if you Google NFT right now and you go to that news tab, it's all negative. Right, because mm -hmm. bad no. news is good news. No. Uh, for, so again, that's where I knew that we had to um, still use Google search in order to be a bridge for the new group of people coming to Web3. It's definitely uh, like, like Medisa always says, it's like learning a new language. Um, yes. And it's, and you're right when I, when, as soon as you, you said, you know, people in web free space, they say I'm in web three and I learn something new every day. It's like, that is, is so true. And it can, it can feel very daunting, overwhelming, scary. Um, you know, it's, it, it's humbling. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a good word for it. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I've been able to achieve a lot in the Web2 space and I feel like I'm fairly confident in what I do in the Web2 space, but you start entering Web3 and I'm like, I have no idea. I'm starting from ground zero. And a lot of our listeners are, are also starting from ground zero. And um, we're trying to be a, a voice, a female voice for anyone stepping into the space who are always hearing nothing but you know, dudes talking about this. So I love what you're building. Um, talk to me about really what does Glypha do? What is like, what is the purpose of it? Talk to me about that. Sure. So Glypha.org is a nonprofit. It's on a mission to increase safety in Web3 um, for everyone, but especially for women. Um, we, having a marketing background, I know that currently how we make decisions, how women make decisions is off of subjective data. Um, meaning that we read about other women's experiences to make decisions. So think about when you go to a new city um, and you need a hotel to stay in, you probably go to TripAdvisor or some similar website to learn about the hotels. You're never going to just like pick a hotel at random, right? And we're able to use TripAdvisor, Yelp, another good example of these review sites where we go and we learn about other women's experiences with um, hotels or restaurants, but we do it for tech products too. When we go to buy a new phone, when we go to buy a new tablet, um, even when we go to buy tools for our businesses, we'll go to these review sites and women more so than men will make their decisions based on the subjective data. And it's not to say that we don't use objective data to make our decisions, but we primarily like to hear other women's stories. So that is what Glypta is meant to be. It is meant to be the Yelp of Web3 or the TripAdvisor of Web3. And when we can learn from other women's positive experiences, then we will um, feel a more sense of safety. But in actuality, the entire ecosystem does become more safe. Um, co companies like Common Sense Media, Common Sense Media is another nonprofit that where parents can go on and review different movies and games for their, for their children. And in doing st those things, we are making the media more safe for children. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's interesting. I feel like you've taken a need from something that didn't even exist before, right? It's, of course I use Google. Of course I use Yelp for all of these reviews. I don't, I don't buy a single thing without reading reviews anymore. And, right. um, and you're right. I've been entering, I've been in this NFT space for, you know, just over a year and I've been buying with very little actual evidence or reviews, which is something I do in my real life. So like, why have I not felt like 
you know, where like someone needs to build this. Well, you, right. And that's exactly what I thought when I first like January of this year, I was like, you know what? Someone's going to build the Yelp of Web3 and I can't wait for it. And then like May came. I was like, where is this? And then June came. I'm like, that's it. I'm doing it. Good for <laughs> right? you. Right, Because it, there, was, there was such a huge need and sure. no one was filling it. Um, I saw a couple of out, couple out there. Um, there was a DAO out there called Product DAO, but it really didn't go anywhere. And what I realized is, well, let's do it for women, right? Because when we even make doctors, just decisions about doctors, oh, yeah. we'll go and read each other's reviews. And so it's not to say that other people aren't going to benefit from Glypta. Um, my background is in search engine optimization. So Glypta is built in a way where Google's going to index that content really, really well and turn up for results. And the goal is so that way when new, the next group of women come into Web3, when they're searching for wallets, when they're searching for NFTs, when they're searching, what's a DAP? that Glypta experiences will start coming up in the organic search results. I love, I love that. It. Definitely. I know one of the things that we've talked a bit about is, you know, just the safety in Web3. When, where, where are you at with that? And how do, I guess, how do we best protect ourselves? Because it is, I mean, we talk about this all the time, but it's a scary space out there. I mean, yeah. just in the internet in general. But then you talk about Web3 and <laughs> it, I feel like, you know, that's even scarier because it makes it so easy for you to, you know, lose your crypto, lose your NFTs, you know, lose access. How do we how do we get past that? How do we move forward and be safer? I think there's a, there's a two prong approach because have you heard of Molly White? Um, she's the journalist yeah. who's chronicling Web3 and crypto. And every okay. day she chronicles all the news from that day. And if you go to, if you just Google Molly White crypto or Molly White Web3, um, and that's good. I, Sounds I really, like we might need to have her on the show. Yeah, yes. right. She's, I mean, I respect her work because we, as we need to know what to watch out for. That's, that's very important. But because she's a journalist and because she also understands search engine opti optimization right, right now, that's all we're seeing is the negative. But that doesn't help us make good decisions. That just helps us, and good safe decision, so that just helps us look at, know what to watch out for. So right. it's kind of like, okay, I wanna, I wanna, um, I wanna buy a new FT. I've seen this new um, project launch. Does anyone know anything about it? And then if you only looked at the negative, that's not going to help you decide whether you want to do it or not. And so we've placed a really heavy burden on the women who've already done it before. And they're usually in the form of community managers and community moderators who have on those discord servers having to constantly repeat themselves like, well, what's your experience with hard wallet or um, hardware wallets? Which ones have you gotten? And, and they're like constantly just repeating themselves over and over and over. And that's not scalable. <laughs> and right. so that's why True. I've been going to those community managers and community moderators and saying, hey, write it once on Glypta and then it will forever be there and indexed by Google. And so that way, when someone says, hey, what do I do? What, do, what should I do? Where, which one should I pick? Then you can just point them to that and not have to continually repeat yourself in Discord. I don't, I mean, Discord is what it is, um, that there's lots of problems. And one is that it isn't indexed by Google. And so we have this mm -hmm. whole wealth of knowledge that isn't being shared outside of that community. Interesting. Yeah, I never really so thought true. about that. It, it is being like, it is, it's its own kind of bubble of information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a self, it's like a self-fulfilling um, a circle of doom, right? Like, right. it's like, we want more women in web three. And we have all the reasons why we want that. But in order to get to web three, you have to like dive into web three. And and to your point, Minty saw like, that's, that's the same, they don't have a perception of safety, because all they can see is the negative. Right. And so we really have to start chronicling and indexing the positive so that they can make good safe decisions. That's right. Good. Well, and I, my opinion, Discord is like a black hole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, it's so easy to get lost in there. And then I do think that there's a really, really bad perception. In fact, I, I was just with friends these past few weeks and like their teenager is in a bad place with Discord. And mm. it's like, so if that's the view that, you know, parents have and, you know, 
kids well, the, are yeah, having. Yeah, that mom and, isn't going to be excited about coming to Discord then, right? No, definitely not. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So. Interesting. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit. So you've got a pretty strong, incredible marketing background. How do you see Web3 really disrupting the marketing industry as a whole? Oh my goodness, I have so many ideas about this. <laughs> okay, so going to the SEO part real quick, right? Like I already established that Web3 is being built on decentralized applications. What marketers don't understand is decentralized applications are on the blockchain and aren't currently indexed by major search engines. So that's problem number one. Search has been our lives for so long and it no longer is going to work the way we want it to work. Number two, decentralized identity goes hand in hand with decentralized internet. People want to take back their data. They don't want big organizations 100%. owning it, mining it, selling it. And so we're going to have to really rethink the way we ask for information and we are going to have to ask for it. And we're going to have to rethink the way we market to them in a way that doesn't feel um, overreaching right? Because you can't say you're Web3 and be collecting all this data and storing it in a Google sheet and calling yourself a Web3 company. That's not the Web3 way. And that's going to be a really big challenge, not only for marketing, but for the entire CRM industry. <laughs> that mm. will be a huge dis disruptor. I mean, besides search, email is king. But, well, if search is king, email is queen, right? Like, or vice versa. Um, and email has such a high conversion rate, but we're kind of doing this dance right now. Marketers and web three is like, should we use email marketing? Should we not use email marketing? Like what's okay. And we, and that's the cool thing about being an early adopter. The rules haven't been set yet. And we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. Um, but those tactics that we are using so heavily in web two are going to have to be rethought and done in a way that honors people's owned identities and not us owning their data. I, I've mm. probably given you too much. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm like, I'm processing it because I, I think know. it, it can literally, um, you know, spiral so much further if you take that, those thoughts and continue them, visualize those 10 years out from now. Yes. And, um, you know, I am bullish about the web three space. If I weren't, I wouldn't be here. And I think it's going to be, um, really interesting to see how it everything evolves and how companies start integrating web three um, right now it's it's like you see money companies throwing money into the space not really sure what wh i don't think these companies even know why they're spending money in the no. space right <laughs> and so it's it's gonna be interesting to see um and also there's a lot of people i think the decision makers in a lot of these organizations that you're seeing putting money in space who don't understand it, who are like, I'm just going to throw money at it to people I believe understand it. But in my mind, it's got to come from them. They have to understand it. And, and they have to understand the value that it's going to add for their organization. Yeah. And so I'm already seeing this happen, though, because Mavion World minted NFTs with Rebecca Minkoff. And if you look at what Rebecca Minkoff can sell her bag at, in a store, right, a retail right. space in Fifth Avenue, super expensive, versus selling a bag with an NFT, she can get twice what she could in a retail store. So that's a, that's a, you know increased not only value and price point, but also bringing on an entire new audience of people, of women who would typically not buy her um, her products. So she's expanding her reach. She's, um, she's ex um, adding value. She's um, increasing her price point all by simply adopting Web3. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I want to go. go back to what you were saying about um, you know, basically creating your own path or journey. One of the things that I have found funny is I feel like all these NFT projects were focused on like Discord and Twitter. And then a lot of them have just recently started adding email marketing to their, you know, overall campaigns and messaging and, and all of that. And I'm just curious do you think that it's because like one project did it and so then everybody else is like, oh, well, so-and-so started emailing everybody, so now we have to do it? Or is I, it I see, like the projects are revolving? I see everything coming back full circle, but from a different angle. 
Um, the first project that started email campaign, it kind of gave everyone else permission to do it. Mm -hmm. There are some projects that are still drawing that line in the sand and saying, hey, we're a Web3 organization. We're not going to blast you with emails. And others are like, well, yeah, but a lot of our um, audiences that are newbies to Web3, they still want to consume on th their information through email. They don't want to have to go to Discord. So we don't want to force them into a channel where they feel unsafe and uncomfortable. So I right. see it both ways. But I, I do believe, again, that everything will come full circle. There's a lot of people out there that say, we don't need marketing Web3. It's nonsense. <laughs> if you have products, you, you need marketing. Um, but right. it's going to take a while for us to establish the culture, um, decide who the players are, just figure out what the rules are. And but that's what's so exciting about being early to the space. Mm -hmm. And that's why I encourage women that's to true. come to Web3 is that you get to decide who are the people who are going to be involved. How are we going to act? You know, what's and we can't just leave it to the men to make these decisions. <laughs> we did that before. It didn't work out. So we have to do it differently now. And it's a really compelling reason to bring more women in. Yeah, I mean, that is really what the Nifty Chicks is all about is um, like we believe that women deserve like radical financial independence and a seat at the table that they haven't had um, before. And I am so right there. Like, I think we are so early and we have the mm -hmm. ability, us women have the ability to really shape and evolve how this thing changes through time and uh, adapts through time. And um, if we don't do everything we possibly can to make sure that we have that seat at that table, in fact, we have half the seats at the table, yeah. then um, then we won't we won't we'll be just be in, in every other industry like it is now in the tech and finance industry. And yeah. those are are, as you just said, we've, we've already gone down that road. And we saw what happened. Like, let's let's take this opportunity and really like own it and, and do something like, just like just like you are doing with Lipta. I think that's. Yeah. And the weirdest Amazing. thing is, if it wasn't for Web3, I would have never even thought to start my own business. I never I never saw that in my future. I didn't think it was a part of my path. I didn't didn't want it. If you had asked me last year, I'd been like, no, I'll just be a chief marketing officer. I'm good. Um, but it was it was from sheer need. I'm like, I have to do this because I can't expect other women to go into the rabbit hole. Like mm -hmm. I have to help. I have to contribute. And um, yeah. so it's opening like to your point, like, I would have never even done this had it not been for this emerging technology that we're all a part of. Yeah, yeah. I think, so you know, amazing. one of the things that, um, you know, we have talked about, Minty Sal and I, is the transition from going web two full time to web three full time. So yeah. you just touched on it right there. Um, I want to hear what was going through your head. Minty Cell has left, uh, you know, a stable, consistent job to go all in Web3. I still have mine waiting for the opportunity to go in all, all, um, all dive into Web3 full time. But I want to hear what your transition was like to go from, uh, you know, a stable, consistent, you have an incredible career, like it's a very safe kind of feeling to I'm going to leave that and go all in. Talk to me about that. I, got, I have like cold chills as you're saying. It. <laughs> I mean, this is very new and very raw and very fresh for me. I'm terrified. Um, and that's okay because um, I did coming from, I've worked for very small startups and very, the largest of enterprises. So when I was at IBM, Jenny Rometty was our CEO and she was such an inspiration, just a force for women. And I, when I was there, I felt pulled up. Um, they just, it was this constant pull, like for women to just keep on rising. Um, but she said, um, there was at one point when I was offered an opportunity to go way outside of marketing and, and be the global product um, owner of a new product that was being launched. And I was like, whoa, I launched products from marketing. I don't launch products from product strategy. But I had um, really good executive mentors who said, if you'll do this, it will be an amazing experience. You'll be a well-grounded marketer by doing this more well-rounded. And um, I, I still wasn't convinced. And then finally, one of them says, remember what Jenny says, comfort and growth doesn't exist. They cannot coexist. Comfort and growth cannot coexist. And so the fact that I'm terrified that. that I'm leaving this salary, that I'm going out there and doing something new. Um, and all, and, and also I've decided to make it an, a, a nonprofit. <laughs> so I need to fundraise my own salary and other women's salaries. I mean, it's all just a lot of pre pressure. I'm not comfortable. 
but I can only imagine the growth that will come out of this. And so it's, it's that hoping for things that I can't see and that's real hope. Right. And so that's what keeps, keeps me going, but I got to, you know, check in with me in a couple of weeks, make sure, <laughs> make sure I'm still going. Uh, well, it's, it's like the, that. that. Thank you. It's like that meme, you know, where it's like from start to success and, you know, it's like up and down and all around mm -hmm. and then, you know, through oh, the yeah. rabbit hole and then, and then maybe somewhere over here you end up <laughs> with a successful business. Uh, yes. It's yeah, definitely not. You know that from easy... firsthand experience, right? Yeah. It's definitely not an easy path to choose, but it is well worth it you know, once, once you, once you get in there and, and get going. So, I'll so I just want to, in a couple yes. of months, so yes. <laughs> it'll be a That's good right. checkpoint. <laughs> yes, that'll be perfect. Oh my gosh, Anna, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, before we let you go, I just want to uh, have you share what's the best way to connect with you besides, you know, glipta.org, go check that out, mm -hmm. but what, how else to connect with you? I'm completely doxxed. I did not ever hide my, I don't have a secondary web three identity. So anytime, if you just Google Anna Seacat, everything about me comes up. Um, I'm at Anna Seacat um, on Twitter and LinkedIn and um, yeah. And so, and then all of Glypta should come up too. So that's G L Y P T A dot org. So thank you for, for, for giving me it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to speak about that. And um, we're excited and think it's really going to make a difference in this space. That's awesome. And good luck at uh, NFT you. London. I'm sorry. Thank I'm not going to be there, oh, but sorry, um, there. I know Minty Sell will be there representing uh, the nifty chicks and she's going to do a fabulous job, but I just, I, I wish I could be there and to, you know, get to meet you in person, but that's the fun thing I about think, web three is like, the next it, time, it's, next event. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and there will be plenty. There will be plenty. So Thank you yeah, so much, sure. Anna. This has been really awesome. Thank you for having me. So, Jen FT, I love that. I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to meet her in person. We've chatted a few times already. And she is just, she's one of those people that, you know, we haven't actually even met in person, but I feel like we're already good friends. What did you think? Yeah. 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 She's, she's awesome. I think it's, um, it's amazing how she took something that was lacking in her life and was like, somebody will do this. Somebody will do this. But then she was like, nobody's doing this. So I'm going to do it myself. And you know what? Like if, if we just did more of that, it's like we could all be, you know, solving problems that we didn't even know existed. So mm -hmm. uh, hats off to all that she's built. And I'm excited for it to really become a, a, the, the go-to resource for, um, you know, people entering the space. Yeah, I agree. And it's funny that you say that because that's something that actually I did in my life or my previous life um, for, with Social Media Day Denver. I wanted us to have a social in Denver. I was in the social media world. I wanted us to have a social media day Denver. And I kept thinking somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it. And nobody ever did it. So I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Yeah, yeah, you guys yeah. definitely have a lot in common. For yeah. sure. Uh, well, and, you know, of course, the marketing side of things as well. Right. Uh, so speaking of social media, I just want to remind everybody that we are out there on all the socials. You can find us at The Nifty Chicks. That is The Nifty, N-I-F-T-Y, Chicks, C-H-I-C-K-S. We would love a follow and, you know, maybe share a post or two, tell some friends. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. And as always, thank you so much for listening to the Nifty Chicks. Always remember, invest in yourself. You are worth it. Please listen carefully to the following disclaimer. Neither the host nor the guests of the Nifty Chicks podcast are acting in the capacity of financial advisors. We wish to remain transparent and impartial to the NFT community at all times, and therefore, the content provided by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests are intended for general information purposes only. 
Nothing written or discussed by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests should be construed or relied upon as investment, financial, legal, regulatory, accounting, tax, or similar advice. Nothing should be interpreted as a solicitation to invest in any cryptocurrency or NFT, and nothing herein should be construed as a recommendation to engage in any investment strategy or transaction. Please be advised that it is in your own best interest to consult with investment, legal, tax, or similar professionals regarding any specific situation and any prospective transaction decisions. You must do your own research when considering investing in cryptocurrencies or NFTs. We are simply sharing our journey with you as we learn more about the world of NFTs. Happy minting.